president who has publicly used his State of the Union, his bully pulpit, the power of his pen when he can do executive orders, the power of the purse when he can put money behind grants to the states, who can say to Congress, give me a bill for seven days and pay sick days and put it on my desk, but who can also say to mayors and governors, if they don't act, you do it first. In addition to that, though, he has given us ambassadors like Valerie Jarrett, who go out in the field and convene roundtables and town halls. They sit with our activists and applaud their campaigns. They sit with business leaders and lift up the good work that they do because they know it's the smart as well as the right thing to do. They speak to policymakers. They speak out when somebody tries to say, as a state, we're gonna tell cities they can't make decisions for themselves about laws that will protect their residents. That's what we have in Valerie Jarrett. We are so honored to have you join us today. Thank you. Thank you. never had a single day, sick day, he never had a single vacation day, 
And until the Affordable Care Act, he had never had health insurance. And he worked for six years with Mayor Nutter and a consortium in Philadelphia to pass an ordinance. And as soon as they passed the ordinance in Philadelphia to the point you were making, the state started saying well, they were going to pass a statute that would prohibit the home rule that the city of Philadelphia has right now to try to take it away. And Mayor Nutter's point was if the employers in Philadelphia support this and the people in Philadelphia support this, the state should as well. In New York, I met two people in the home health care business, both who missed the deaths of their parents because they couldn't afford to take away from work. One woman put her son on a, her, her, her father on a bus for eye surgery because she couldn't afford to take the loss in pay, let alone risk losing the job if she did. Who are we as a country where that happens? Yeah. Those stories should not happen in the greatest, wealthiest, best country on earth. It just shouldn't happen. And with your help, it will end. And so we're counting on you. Uh, the president likes to say he's now in the fourth quarter of his presidency. He's now in the last half of the fourth quarter of his presidency. But really important things can happen in the fourth quarter, particularly when we have the momentum of the American people behind us. And with your efforts in the cities and states, as Ella mentioned, we are taking this show on the road. We are traveling. We are raising the awareness of this issue. We are working with employers to raise the awareness. And stay tuned. Tomorrow I'll be in New York highlighting an employer who is stepping up to the plate in meaningful ways. And so this whole basket of issues are ones that we care so much about. And we want your support. We want to work with you. Tina and our entire team, we're right here. Uh, at your disposal. Call us if you have an idea, if you have a best practice that you discover and you want us to lift it up from the White House, we're here to do that as well. So in closing, I'll thank you for your leadership. Thank each and every one of you who has made this your life's passion as it is ours. I believe in order to make great change, you do need great allies. And I'm proud to say that my relationship with Family Values at Work actually predates my time as a council member um, as Wendy said, and Wendy, I, I just want to give a shout out to you. She's been an awesome. Yeah. Yeah. As Wendy mentioned, we work together to expand and strengthen the district's accrued sick and safe leave law in 2013 as part of the Paid Sick Days for All Coalition, and I remember many of those coalition meetings. Um, and thanks to the effort to all the people in that coalition, and some of you are here, including my legislative director, Ari Weisbard. Today, the district has one of the strongest paid leave laws in the country. That deserves a little yeah. more. Anyway, thank you again for your work and your help. I really appreciate it, and thanks for the award. Uh, Ms. Schuler has raised the visibility of work and family policies on the shop floor through various political struggles and campaigns in Oregon, and for the past six years as the AFL-CIO's first woman secretary uh, treasurer. Tonight, we especially recognize her leadership in fighting for local control and the most basic form of democracy, the right for towns, cities, counties across the country to set progressive labor standards. Under Liz's leadership, the AFL-CIO has been at the forefront of the fight against legislative legislation driven by the American Legislative Exchange Council, better known as ALEC. <laughs> in fact, Pennsylvania, as many of you know, is in the throes of another battle right now. Liz comes out of the IBEW. She's an electrician, comes out of an electrician's family, creating light for all of us. As a game changer, we are so pleased to have her leadership. We could, she couldn't be here tonight, but we have Tiffany and, and Katie, friends of ours from the <laughs> AFL-CIO, who will accept the award on her behalf. I'm Liz Schuler, Secretary Treasurer of the AFL-CIO, and I am so honored to receive your 2015 Game Changer Award. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. I want to recognize my good friends Ellen Bravo, Carol Joyner, and the dedicated staff of Family Values at Work. You are making a real difference in the lives of working families. For too long, the term family values has been associated with conservative politicians who want to regulate our bodies and our bedrooms. But we practice real family values. 
Family values is making enough money to be able to support your family. Family values is having paid sick days so you can take care of yourself or a loved one. Family values is having access to quality childcare and paid family and medical leave. Family values is having a work schedule you can rely on. And family values is being able to form a union and negotiate for good wages in a fair workplace. Working together, that is exactly what we are doing. In states across the country, we are demanding public policies that lift up working people. Paid sick leave, equal pay, fair scheduling, you name it. These are labor issues. And of course, we are negotiating for family-friendly policies in our union contracts. But we are also lobbying for family-friendly laws so all working women and men can live healthy, fulfilling lives. This is our fight. The corporate right wing will stop at nothing to see us fail. They are pushing for so-called preemption laws that make it harder to pass pro-worker legislation at the local level. They are behind the effort to make it harder to join a union and easier to be discriminated against because of who you are. They may have the money, but we have the coalition. And I will take our passion over their bank account any day of the week. And the working people of this nation are the real game changers. And we are ready to stand up and fight for our rights. We will not sit quietly by and accept an economy that does not value our work. We will not shrink ourselves in the face of these tough challenges. And standing together, strong and united, the AFL-CIO, Family Values at Work, and all working women and men will build an America we can all be proud of. Thank you. Anyway, I'd like to start by saying a huge thank you to um, you know, Family Values at Work and everything you did to support the Coalition for Social Justice and Race Up Massachusetts for our campaign uh, win on um, and for the Massachusetts workers. And for everything you are currently doing for the next big win for Family uh, Values and paid family medical lab. We the people can truly make things happen if we organize and send a strong message that human beings deserve this right to take care of themselves and their loved ones. Thank you so much and I'm so We don't leave single issue lives. After all, having paid sick days means nothing if you get fired for taking that paid sick day to care for your loved one. We have to fight to end employment discrimination. Our fates are linked, as we've seen with this drastic local interference bill in Michigan, in Pennsylvania. The one in Michigan was coined the Death Star. In one fell stroke, it attempted to wipe out 42 local <coughs> non-discrimination ordinances at the same time that it eliminated the right for any cities to enact paid sick days laws and higher wages. We know we must organize our resources, our relationships to fight together against our common opposition. We are proud to be in this battle for good and against evil with Andy Garcia and the Equality Federation. We want to recognize your valuable partnership um, with this Game Changer Award. on the uptake sometimes, so I'll talk a little bit about that. But uh, first, I want to thank uh, Family Values at Work and Ellen and Carol in particular uh, for this award. This is really an honor for me. Um, he understands that one of the best practices is to speak out for public policy. And in New York, he's been an effective spokesperson for our paid family leave insurance campaign. And he's also speaking out nationally about these issues. As a native New Yorker, I am so proud to present him with the 2015 Family Values at Work Business Champion Award. I want to thank Family Values at Work for recognizing me and Uncommon Goods for this award. While I'm sorry I can't be there with you in person, I'm certainly there with you in spirit. Uh, when I think of paid family leave, it seems similar to advances that our country has made over the years through issues like unemployment insurance, social security, public education, and most recently, health care. 
These are all things that have benefited individuals and benefited our society as a whole, including businesses in our country. At some point, each of us is going to face an issue in all likelihood where a family member falls ill. And many of us will have the joy of having the birth of a child. In both of these situations, we need to take time off from work. Uh, what these bills are offering, I think, is really a no-brainer for business. They're actually offering to have the employee fund insurance that will give them up to 12 weeks of paid leave. In the case of New York, the bill is advocating not only that paid leave, but also an update to the Temporary Disability Insurance, or TDI, program, which right now is hopelessly out of date. It's not been updated in 25 years and pays only $170 a week. And so the New York bill would both have the employee funded element and also a shared contribution by both the employee and the employer to that TDI program. Our neighbors in Connecticut and Massachusetts, I also understand, are gaining momentum in similar bills and I'm excited uh, to see all three states pass a bill in the near future. Ultimately, everyone in our country should have access to paid leave. It will not have a meaningful impact on business. If anything, I think it would have a positive impact as workers could get the leave that they need. This is a cause I'm excited to support as a small business owner, and so let's work together to make NY next. <laughs>